So welcome really to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over some past exam questions relating to sampling. Now as always there'll be a copy of the questions that we go through in this video as a link in the description and I'll also include some lesson links that go over this topic in more detail. Now before we get started working through some past exam questions related to sampling, let's just have a quick overview over some of the key concepts that you need to know. Now the first thing is that a sample is a very small or representation of a much bigger population. Now for a sample to be adequate, it must be as large as possible and be representative of the population all its subgroups. Now what it means by it being representative and all its subgroups is that if you've got a population where 40% are let's say male and 60% are female then in your sample you want to have as close as possible to those percentages so you want to have let's say if you're picking a sample of out of that population of 40 males 60% female if you're selecting 100 people then you would want 40 roughly 40 males and 60 females for them to be representative of the population. And the same thing kind of goes applies with, let's say age, which could have an opinion, uh, a factor on your sample or what your information you're trying to gather from that. But also things like ethnicity, height, weight, etc. Now a sample when collected must be fair with an equal chance of selection and must be free from bias. Now when you are collecting a sample you want to make sure that everything has got equal chance of being selected. So you're not being sort of biased or prejudiced towards one thing or to another. And you also when it comes to bias now whenever you're criticizing a sample or criticizing some form of data collection biasness always comes into play. So where did you collect the sample? Who did you ask? And when did you ask? Uh, probably three common things to criticize biasness of a sample. So it's, again, is going over that is going to be who you're asking, when you're asking, and where you're asking are going to be key things when criticizing or looking into biasness. Now the rain, main reason why a sample is taken is often when the population is too large and collecting information from an entire population can be time and financially costly. So again, the reason why you collect a sample is because asking everyone is just going to take far too much time and you may not be able to physically do that by yourself so you may then have to recruit other people which then may cost money if you're working for a company because obviously they're not going to want to do it for free. Now common sampling methods are random sampling, cluster sampling, stratified sampling and systematic sampling in which if you wanted to know more detail about each of those particular types of sampling methods in terms of data collection then again you can feel free to uh, do that in your own revision but in terms of the GCSE I would say all you need to be able to know is to be aware that there are certain methods to be able to recognize it. The actual details of step by step on how you collect that data, that sample is more of an AS level sort of task. Now proportions taken from a sample can be used to estimate numbers from a population on the condition that the sample is a good representation of the population. Now basically what that means is if you've selected a sample and it's a good representation of the entire population then you could use those proportions to estimate the total numbers of people in the population. So for example if I selected a sample size of 10 people and I saw in that sample that three out of the 10 people like cake. So then what I would then do is use that proportion to, so three out of 10, I would then multiply that by the population size, let's say 68 million, and I would then find the number of people from that 68 million who like cake based on that fraction from the sample. So now let's have a look at some past exam questions. Now, if you want an access to these questions, all you need to do is just simply click on the link in the description. So looking at question one, it says, give one reason why a sample may be used to represent a population. So you could give any one of the following statements for the one mark that's available for this question. So you could say that it's gonna be more manageable. You could say something along the lines of that it's gonna take less time. You could also say that it's going to cost less. And obviously you may expand to make sure that this actually makes sense in relation to the question. Uh, you could also say that the population may be too large. And so a typical example you might say is that the population may be too large to use all the data. And that should definitely be good enough for the one mark. 
Moving on to question two, it says Trevor stood by a turnstile at a football ground. He counted the number of adults and the number of children that passed through for one minute. The table shows the results. For 2A, it says in total 43,697 people attended the match. Estimate the number of children that attended the match. So for this, what we need to do is work out the proportion of children from the sample that's collected. So here, the proportion is going to be 22 out of the total, so that's 148 plus 22, which is 170. And that's the proportion, so then I need to then multiply that by the population size, which in this case is 43697. Now if I type that all into my calculator, I should get an answer roughly around 6, 5, uh, sorry, 5,655. Then for question 2b, it says, what assumption have you made in making your estimate? So again, something along the lines of that the sample collected is representative of the entire population. So okay, something along those lines or that the population is the same proportion as the sample. So something along those lines will be good enough for the single mark. For question three, it says Naveen states a hypothesis. It says most people travel by train more than twice a week. He asked a sample of five people at a train station how many times they traveled by train last week. The table shows the results. For three, eight says show how Naveen could have used the data to support his hypothesis. So there's a couple of things you could, you could say that he could use to support his hypothesis is that four out of the five people traveled more than two or more than twice I should say so that could be one statement for the two marks you could also say you could calculate the mean by adding all the numbers up so I've got five plus one plus four plus ten plus six all divided by five and that gives me an answer of 5.2 you could also work out the median in which the median if I order those numbers that would be one four five, six, and 10. So the median is five. So again, something along those lines would support his hypothesis of being greater than more than half or more than twice. So both of these are more than two. Moving on to 3B, it says give two reasons why this sample should not be used to support his hypothesis. Well, there's a couple of things you could say. One being that the sample size is too small. If you imagine how many people go to a train station on any given day, picking five people is going to be relatively small. So the sample size is too small. You could also say that it's bias as data was collected at a train station. Um, you could also say something along the lines of that you may not have the same rate uh, at different times of the day or different t on different days or in other weeks. You may also say that commuters travel more. So if people are, if you're asking people who are usually on before work office hours, they're more likely to be traveling to work. So they're going to obviously be work. You'd expect them to be working more than two twice a week. So again, commuters more likely, students are more likely. You could also say that uh, the week that they've, they've chosen may not be representative of the actual data. So for example, you might find more people catch a train maybe during the winter than they do in the summer or maybe outside of term time. So any of those lines, as long as it's going to be correct, you'll get the mark for it. But I would definitely include something along the lines of sample size and definitely mention something about it being biased. Then moving on to question four, it says that Jan works at a dock in the UK. She records the number of boats departing from a dock between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. over one day. The table shows the data for the 12 hours for a day in July. The for question four, eight says the departures were affected by strong winds for one hour. Which time do you think it was? Give a reason for your answer. Well, hopefully you can see which one is going to be the outlier. It's going to be the ninth hour. Now, in terms of the time, if we start from 8 a.m., so 8 a.m. plus nine hours, 
is going to give me a time between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. Now, in terms of why that would be the case is how do I know it's that one? Because that's the lowest number of departures. And there we go. Then moving on to 4B, it says that Jan uses the data to predict how many boats will depart from the dock in a year. In her method, she uses the estimate of the 15 boats in each one hour period throughout the day. Assume that the same number of boats each day work out her prediction. So she wants to work out how many boats will leave in a year. So looking at this, we've got 15 multiplied by 24, because there's 24 hours. So it's 15 boats leave in one hour. And that equals 360 per day. So then if I then multiply that by 365, so 360 multiplied by 365, that's going to give me an answer of 13,000 or 131,000. 400 so it's one three one four hundred and there we go then moving on to four c it says in fact fewer boats depart in the winter than in the summer fewer boats depart at night than during the day what does this tell you about jan's prediction well for this it's going to be that it's too high now in terms of giving our reason for this well there's a couple of different reasons you can give but for this you need to say something along the lines of that there are fewer departures in the winter than in the summer whereas Jan has assumed that it's going to be consistent in the summer we also know that there's fewer departures at night than during the day so again not consistent which is what Jan assumed during the day and you could also say that the actual numbers are not given and again if you've got any other reason again I'll include the mark scheme so you can see whether your answer would be correct if it's not mentioned if I've not mentioned it I should say moving on to question five it says Fatima is testing an ordinary six-sided die to see if it is biased she throws the dice 180 times work out the number of times the dice is expected to land on a one well the probability of getting a one is one sixth so then if I then multiply that a bit like relative frequency multiply that by the total number of trials which is 180 that gives me an answer of 30 then for question 5b it says here are the actual results is the dice biased so for this we can say that yes it is so here the number of reasons you can give is that 6 should be around 30 when actually it's a lot less and now 180 trials is about right so that is a big good enough sample size so again uh, results should be consistent with what theoretical probability is saying you could also say that two and three appeared more than expected and again they should have been around about 30 an even number of times and you could also say something along the lines of that after 180 throws all frequencies should be approximately the same so something along those lines would be good enough for four marks then moving on to question six it says that a company makes boxes of matches the company checks that the boxes contain 150 matches the number of matches in a sample of 11 boxes is as follows and it says write down the mode so the mode is the one that appears the most so which of these numbers appears the most i would say 151. it then says work out the median so what i then need to do is order those numbers so order them first i've got 143 I've got four 150s, so 150, oh. actually I've missed off a 151 which I've just spotted there but that doesn't change the final answer, um, there's a pink pen there it is, 150, 150, 150, 151, 151, 151, 151, 
151 and then I've got a 152. So our middle number is going to be the sixth number which is 151. Then it says work out the mean, so I've just got to add all those numbers up and if I add all those numbers up I get 1650 divided by 11 and that gives me an answer of 150. Then moving on to 6b, it says the company claims that there are 150 matches in a box. Give a reason why this claim seems fair. And the reason why it seems fair is because all averages calculated were 150 or more. It says give a reason why the claim seems unfair. Well, again, you could say something along the lines of that uh, one box was 143 so although it's an average that one was dramatically a lot less than 150 as per claimed the sample size of 11 is small could have picked more boxes and you could also say that also along the lines of this one that one has less than 150 so again something along those lines for that single mark would be good enough then moving on to the last part it says the company uses the first seven boxes produced each Monday to check the contents state two reasons why this method of sampling can be approved so again improve so you could say that something along the lines of that you could take a larger sample so take a larger sample size so not 11 maybe definitely a number that's bigger than 30 you could also say spread the sample collection over numerous days and if I can spell numerous not with an E numerous days you could also say time of the day as well and there we go